The frontier is defined as uncharted territory. It basically got out of its natural balance. By land or notion. Those who chart that territory tell a story. The past illustrates the blueprint for the present, how things are and how they've evolved. From land to water, we are challenged to border that new frontier, a frontier the outdoorsman knows like no other. Author Gary Lewis works his way along that edge of where discoveries, failures, and achievements have written the story of the sportsman. From state to state, continent to continent, the stories told create the foundation of the present, and they lay the framework for the future. Through the muzzle fire and on the stone are stories from the edge. Water is the most important thing as far as Indians are concerned, because that's, that's life. The past is written, the present is here, and this is Frontier Unlimited. You got a tool? Oh, we're getting bigger. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. Well done. There's a lot of hard work. <laughs> Every year, Lewis plans his September around a thing we call fish camp. Walleye guide and author Ed Iman started it as a way to promote the awareness of the mid-Columbia fisheries. A bunch of us gather at a place called Peach Beach on the Washington side of the river. In years past, we fished for bass and walleye and steelhead, but in recent years, the focus has been on full chinook because the salmon fishing has been fantastic. So there's, there's rigs all around the boat, just it's, like like you said earlier, it's boat management, so it just keeps everything clean and nice and organized. I like to probably keep my rods clean. We got a three ounce weight on a slider. I always put the weights on a slider, so that way if it ever gets stuck in the net, the fish can run, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna hurt about a, uh, Three foot leader with a little two watt hook. I got these all pre cut in here. Just little chunks of eggs. Stick it right through the egg there. And stick it right up around the hook. So we're gonna run some some like this. Okay. Just straight eggs like this. Let's try to beat Bruce out to the water. <laughs> we just launched at Rowena. We are in Meyer State Park, Oregon side, the Columbia River. This weather is fantastic. This might be the best weather day I've ever launched at this spot. And we're hoping it holds out. I think there's good numbers of fish here today. We're probably gonna really get into them. And if we don't, we're gonna see a lot of other people doing it. So it's gonna be a good day. There's a lot of people here. It's gonna be fun. On September 11th, 43,016 adult Chinook salmon had passed over the Bonneville Dam. Two days later, 23,516 Chinook passed over the Dalles Dam. A lot of those fish were down there in the deep green water. There were 64 boats at the mouth of the Klickitat, with an average of four anglers per boat. Our timing could not have been better. So what I look for on the fish, you can see a couple of fish right here on the ground. I look for fish and where they're at. We're, fit, we're riding 25 feet. Those yes. are sitting about 23 feet. Right. So what we're doing on the technique today is we're gonna be taking these eggs, and we'll just drop this down, put the eggs in the water, you, you free spool the line, and all we're doing is going right down to the bottom, okay? There's a slight current in here, just because of the movement, and what I try to do is as soon as I hit bottom, okay, I, hit, I hit just hit bottom, yep. one, two cranks, that's two. gonna lift it yep. up into that, into that strike zone. Yep. And I'm gonna keep the motor going, either forward or reverse, just to keep that angle straight up and down. Yep. It's almost like, I look at hover fishing as bobber fishing without the bobber. That's all we're doing. What I'm looking for right now is a nice shelf drop off where these fish are gonna channel up through. So guys, go ahead and uh, let down. Okay, 
okay, there's gonna be two, basically two types of bite. The really sensitive bite, or what I call a suicide fish, the one that just takes it and just gobbles it up, turns it around. Typically what they're doing is they're just grabbing a hold of it and, and tasting it. So right when they grab a hold of that, you need to get right on them and get that hook stuck. What I'm using today is the heavy bead. And the heavy bead, what I have here is I have it, they have a neat system where they have like a rubber band system, but it's not a rubber band. It's a rubber band, but a little thicker. And it goes on this bead. And what that does is if that fish gobbles up all those eggs, let's say, and there's nothing left, you still have this bead, they may come back and try to grab that because they missed something. So it just gives a little bit more attractant to it. It's a UV coating on it. So it's a, you know, sometimes these fish at this depth see in that UV light. So it's just a little different. I like to try some different things early in the morning until we really find where these fish are going to be. What I love is all the different types of boats that you see out here. We could see some crazy stuff today at the launch. You'll see trucks that have been putting boats in the water there since the early 70s. And, and you see people launching with their Hondas and their Subarus. I mean, it's all on. You bring what you got and you go fishing. Getting bigger. Yeah. Every year, Lewis plans his September around a thing we call fish camp. Walleye guide and author Ed Iman started it as a way to promote the awareness of the mid Columbia fisheries. A bunch of us are hover fishing. You have the most techniques used on a single day. So some people are hover fishing. Some people are trolling uh, with weights to get the bait down. Some people are trolling flatlining like uh, wigglers. So you'll see all different types of techniques today. Rick just had a bump. I had what felt like a fish bump into my line. And so I went down, checked my bait, put new bait on. We're right in the thick of them right now. Dang it. Look at that. Ooh, clean you. That's why you, you gotta get on them right away. Yeah. They just clean you. I swung on him, but he wasn't there. Definitely like him. Definitely like him. I don't want to mess with sitting there and uh, trying to cut them and stuff. So the night before, I sit there and I pre-cut them, and I put it in layers. So if you look at this box, there's eggs in this box, and then there's paper towel in between them, so they just are layered up in the box. So we just have nice, easy layers, easy for the clients to grab a hold of, slip on. They don't have to cut it. I know the exact size they got. It's right. So it's, it's perfect. Shane uh, Magnuson, one of the guides, buddy of mine, he's got uh, eight in the box already this morning. Trolling super baits. We are getting bit, bit, bit. I just watched this guy right here and saw his rod go down and set the hook. Ten years ago in 2005, the total Chinook Salmon Passage at Bonneville Dam was 570,413 fish. We might need to take things up a notch here. So um, I'm thinking I'm going to pull out the secret ingredient. This year, fisheries yeah. biologists expect the total of 925,300 Chinook and 539,600 coho. Ed Iman taught me this, yeah. That will do it. Yeah. I like that. That's gonna be good. Good, good. Down 24.7 feet. Bump the bottom. Two cranks up. Chocolate donut. I'm feeling it. Our numbers are expected to be a bit lower than the last two years, but significantly higher than the 10 year average and high enough to take third place since we've been keeping such records. These salmon are headed for their home rivers in Washington. Oregon and Idaho. There's a lot to see out here. You're watching the seagulls and gulping down the pea mouth that are laying on the, on the bottom and getting to get while it's happening. But you look around, you're going to see some interesting things going on out here. Just a little uh, Anna's Bloody Tuna poke here. Just uh, trying to mix it up a little bit. We'll find out what they bite and what they're, what they're after. So sometimes it's good to have a bunch of different scents on the boat. Just try it, try it. You know, 
It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to experiment. But a fish nonetheless. The mouth of the clickitat is right here. And that's why these fish are staged here, because it's a nice shot of cool water. And the channel flows out of the mouth there and out into the river, kind of at a 90 degree angle, and then it starts to turn. And what we always forget is that this is like a lake here, because there's a dam downstream. In the old days, before the river was dammed, it would have been a lot narrower here, and then that channel would have intersected right about where we are here. Today, you got mud flats, these big silt flats that are out here. That's why sometimes people will get stuck because they don't realize that it, it's so shallow there. That's why we have to watch our electronics and then make our adjustments uh, on the depth. So, hey, Eric, we're dropping down off the shelf, so you got to recheck your depth there. Yeah. I'm going with a. Uh, a little smaller profile on the bait here. Got to change something up. That's what we're looking for. Well done. Beautiful. Every year, Lewis plans his September around a thing we call fish camp. Walleye guide and author Ed Iman started it as a way to promote the awareness of the mid-Columbia fisheries. There's a few fish being caught, but none from us yet. We've got a few uh, nice little uh, taps. They're hitting really soft. So really, if you don't get on them right away, you're just, you're just not getting them. But our time's coming. Our time's coming. We're, we're getting, get, getting definitely bump, bumps, so that means our bait's good. We're working really good. We just need to get that one on. on. Nope, missed it. And just missed another one. And it just took half of my you bait. You too, Eric. Half of my bait. It's a light, 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 light. Tap, tap, tap. some weight on this rod here. Maybe this is what it's going to take. File all the different sides of it, get it sticky. We're in them now. Get ready, guys. This is a very light bite. I'm a very frustrated angler. That was the ticket. That was the ticket because it was stuck bee. right there. It's right inside there. That's what we're looking for. Well done. Right there. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. hatchery. Okay, that cuts that top plate out. 
and you can see it starts bleeding down the side. What we're going to do is we're going to switch to... Let's I, do I, it. I had a trailing hook on that. Yeah, I saw that. Let's do it. I, that fish had it right there. And I think so. I think yeah. that was the ticket. So I so. think because they're biting so light, sometimes having a little bit of trailing on yeah. it, it grabs a hold in it and, and then they try to turn. Yep. And then, and then it sticks off. This is a heavy bead and with this banding system they have, it easily attaches to either your line or to your hook shank or to the hook itself. And that just adds a little something extra. So if the fish come and strip your eggs off, you still have something there to attract them. These fish are biting so light today that we just decided we we're gonna put a stinger hook on. And if we can get down there, give them the bait they want to nibble at, and uh, when we're setting the hook, we might just, we've got another hook there that might potentially grab them. So it's legal, we're gonna do it. Clean to me. All right. It's September and we're on the Columbia and we're all gathered here at the mouth of the Klickitat fishing for salmon, but all up and down the river, there's a lot of different stuff going on. And that's what is so fun about being at fish camp, because one day you could be fishing for salmon, and then the next you'll be fishing for smallmouth bass way upstream. And then there's guys that will go for after the sturgeon. There's crappie. There's the northern pike minnow, which you can actually make money going fishing and save salmon while you're doing it. All these people around us right now, I don't know how many boats there are, we're all fishing for salmon. There's a lot of fish in the river right now and more coming. And it's only going to get better as we get deeper into September. Dropping off, Eric. <laughs> it's crazy. They can grab this bait and crush it and not get hooked. And I am on it. I am dialing down into that depth finder and I am feeling the bite. These fish are like Houdini. A lot of hard work. Got him right in the beak. <laughs> Every year, Lewis plans his September around a thing we call fish camp. Walleye guide and author Ed Iman started it as a way to promote the awareness of the mid-Columbia fisheries. That's what we're looking for. Well done. The thought is we're having these really, really light biters. I'm going to put a little small number two hook behind our two on. So it just is like sitting right there. You know, so, so it's just like off to the side of it. It's sitting right there. So with these light biters, they're going to grab a hold, but they're going to get stuck on that. So just a little bit finer wire. So I think it's going to work. Oh, there we go. Man, it was a lot of hard work. Got him right in the beak. <laughs> he was chasing him. Good job. Nice job. Good job, Gary. That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> worked hard for that one. Yep. Okay. Wow. Good job. Thank you. You had to you had to sit sitting right there. Huh? Yeah. Did you, yeah. Good. And, that the, and you got come, right on it. That could have come out really easy. Yep. No, you got it good. <laughs> Columbia River. Gotta fight through a slope. That was tough. That is a gun that is made by Jack. Wow! Those are great, great, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Oh, you gotta hold it toward me. 
Did anybody ever tell you? <laughs> For those who are trout fishing today. <laughs> good, good job, Eric. Oh, I love that catching those wonderful. things. That was the right species. Yeah, it's a nice Yeah, it's made a couple of runs. Come back at us. Was it coming the around the bow. I think it was the donut. Go, go, go around the bow. Okay, coming around. Good job. Okay, I'm gonna come up towards it. Okay, I'm gonna go over forward. Okay. See it. <laughs> Good fish. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's too big. <laughs> it's too big. Is that it? We don't allow this. Yeah. It's almost like trout. Just yeah. gave it a little, gave it a little, and then it just took it and ran. That was, that's yeah. the only fish that was going to do that today. Yeah. Right now, the bulk of the fish are in the big river. The focus of the effort will shift to the tributary soon. Then we'll change our baits and our presentations to favor spinners, jigs, and flies. We have a good run of salmon this year. Don't miss it. Well, that was a little different. That was uh, kind of a, uh, that hit, started out with the tap, 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 and kind of like trout. I just gave it a little line, gave it a little line, and then it was off to the races. It was fun. Not very many times do you get to fish the Columbia in September in the afternoon and, and have a nice, calm, low day like this. Each evening, we vacuum sealed our catch. A few fillets went into the camp chef's smoke vault and all the fishermen hovered around the fresh smoked salmon appetizers. It sure is fun to see so many happy salmon fishermen on the water, in the campgrounds, eating in restaurants, fueling up their boats to go and do it again.